welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy, and um, we had had a bunch of fun things planned to do, like on Thursdays, as little tidbits and stuff for the um, YouTube. But unfortunately, last night, RJ was involved in a car wreck. Um, he's fine. He's fine. He actually walked away with not a mark on him. We spent a lot of time at the hospital last night. Um, getting tests done. Um, his eyes were responded in a way that, and there was a name for it, but I didn't catch it. Um, but his eyes responded in a way it was like doing this jerking thing. And they said there's only two times that that that, that happens, and one is if you've been drinking, and the second is if you have head trauma. Um, so he was really kind of out of it, incoherent, um, very slow to answer. Um, so the ambulance transported him to the hospital um, and they did a CT scan and all of this stuff and by the grace of God he was fine. Um, they did a breathalyzer on him to rule out him being drunk. They did a urinalysis to see if he was on any drugs and all this stuff. He's not I mean, I don't know what to tell you. He's a good kid. He really is. Um, all of that stuff came back clean. They did do his um, blood work and all of that. He took two bags of saline and fluids and drank two big cups of water before he could urinate. So that led the hospital to say that he was overly dehydrated and that that caused him to either fall asleep, pass out, they're not saying either way for insurance purposes. They're just saying to be um, not attentive. Inattentive is what they called it. It, it. Dehydration caused him to be inattentive while driving. He received a ticket. Um, this morning, I found out that I have really good insurance. Um, not only are they going to take care of the other man who... Um, was very belligerent with RJ and even the highway patrol when they I guess ran his name or whatever they said he's not a nice guy um, he was very belligerent and didn't want to call the cops and all this stuff and RJ was you know scared and he stayed on the phone with me he he just he says all he remembers is mom was on the phone when he needed mom and he needed comfort mom was on the phone so he doesn't remember calling me um, but then he could hear my voice and he was like, okay, I got this, Mom. I, I got this. And so I stayed on the phone with him until the police and stuff got there. I actually got there before um, Highway Patrol. We live in such a rural area that even though it was called in, it was almost 45 minutes before the Highway Patrol could get there. They had to come from Bonita. And it was a non-emergency, so it's not like they could run with lights on and stuff. The ambulance got there from Claremore. Um, Chelsea Fire Department was actually the first on the scene and one of their police officers and we're, he was probably 20 miles out of town so I mean it's not like it, it's pretty rural around here so 45 minutes is not bad for a highway patrol um, considering where he had to come from so um, yeah it, it was scary um, it was draining He's fine. Um, he tried to get a substitute for his roping tonight. He had cavalcade, and it is a team event. The team is scored. Um, they're allowed like one calf roper in the division, in each division. They've got a, a children's and an open. They're allowed um, one team in the adult and one team in the children's. And, and it's all of the roundup clubs. Um, competing for this title of cavalcade, cavalcade champion for the year. It is the world's largest amateur rodeo. He's going, his dad took him, Cash went with him, who's a friend of his, um, it's his team roping partner, and then um, he's doing fine. He says he, he wasn't sore, they gave him some pain medication there at the hospital because he did have a really bad headache. Um, but other than that, through the power of prayer, he's fine. So, I'm a happy mama. Um, anyway, the car is pretty much totaled. Um, when 
the insurance got the phone call. Um, they contacted us and told us I have collision, like comprehensive collision. I have more than liability, which I don't really even know what that means. I put insurance on the truck back when in, I guess a few years ago, I say a few. The truck is 16 years old and back when I was making payments on it, I got it when it was a year old and it had about 40,000 miles on it. I got it used. Um, I went through a bank to purchase it and they set up the insurance. They said I had to have full coverage. Well, just because I paid off the truck doesn't mean I ever changed anything. So I hadn't changed anything. I, inch, I switched my insurance back in 2014 and they, the one that I switched to asked you specific numbers. Well, I didn't know what to put in there. So I copied it off of my other policy and put it in there. It was affordable. I was good to go. So apparently um, I have zero deductible on the other car taken care of. They're, they're going to take care of that. Um, and then they're going to take care of, our, our car is really old. It was an old work car. Um, it's probably worth fifteen hundred at the max. So, and then I have a little deductible that comes out of that, and that's it. Um, they hauled it off. We were trying to find. There was a really rude tow truck driver there, um, and he told me it was going to cost me about two hundred dollars, and that I was going to have to pay him right then. So, as my son is being loaded in the ambulance, this man's wanting money, and I told him just leave the car. I'll come back for. It. I will find a way. I'll come back for it. Don't you? Don't touch it. I'm not paying you $200. He was like less than seven miles from Kevin's house. I was going to ask him just to tow it to Kevin's house. And no, the highway patrol is the one that called them and they hauled the other car off. And then our insurance went and got ours this morning. He told me that when we told, when we called in, we should have let them know that the car was undrivable and they would have taken care of it right then. Um, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Um, I just, it was terrible, wonderful, wonderful EMS fire department, and it's a volunteer fire department, so, um, and they have EMS on there, so it, it was amazing. The highway patrol told RJ that he had to find fault for insurance purposes. He says, I, I don't have a choice, and so he had to ticket him um, because he did cross the center line, so therefore he caused the wreck. Um, He's fine though. That that's my thing. Is he is fine, and uh, yeah, it, it took him a couple of hours to get back to acting like himself. So they said that was probably the dehydration. Um, they also warned us that with the heat indexes that we've had, there is no way for us to take in enough fluids when we're out working outside. Now we've always worked outside and never had a problem. We know to drink lots of water. He had half of a Gatorade that he had drank and was there in the car with him. He had water bottles. He was headed to Kevin's. He always takes a big jug. Matter of fact, we just got four new big jugs um, of water for, for water. Um, so we know the importance, but the nurse told us it's physically impossible, even if we sat and just drank and drank and drank and drank water all day long. Um, to be out in the heat with the heat indexes we're having right now and the humidity. She says it's virtually impossible to get enough fluids in you to not suffer some form of dehydration. So, of course, now we're all doing the pinch test, okay, to make sure that we are. I don't know if you know about that. We do it with baby calves and stuff, but if you pinch your skin and it's slow to go down, then you're a little dehydrated. Let me see. I normally need to do it over here a little bit. Um, I don't know if you can see that. But when you're working out, you always do the pinch test. If your skin, and we do it on our hands because circulation puts these to outermost extremities. If all of this has water, these will be the last thing to get water. So we try it. Um, I've been known to do it right here on RJ, just messing around. But <laughs> I'm uh, But we are practicing the, the pinch test a lot right now. Um, so it is what it is. It's a blessing. I know that it's material things, but they don't matter to us. Okay, I'm just going to tell you that right now. That guy can be irate over his car. It's just a car. Insurance, that's what I have insurance for, and apparently pretty good insurance. Um, but it's just a car. It's not a life. 
um, everybody's fine. Those other two that were involved in the accident didn't even go to the, to the hospital. Um, RJ did because of the head trauma and him not responding like he should. So, but all is good, all is well, and hopefully um, we'll get back on track after the weekend. Um, we just got to recover mentally, emotionally, <coughs> and of course we're in hang season, so we have the right of way hauled in. I have the last load to unload um, today. It's in the barn on the trailer. I'm going to unload it while the guys are at Cavalcade. Um, and then we've got hay laid down, but it's right here on our property. No place we have to go. He's not entered in any other rodeos. He's just got this one. So, um, he is concerned that he missed work and that, um, you know, the whole thing. And now he's like, I have to buy you a car. I was like, you don't have to buy us a car. We're a family and we will deal with it when it comes. So we'll get a little bit of a settlement, use a down payment. And honestly, my husband didn't like that car anyway. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, God has something when when He takes something from your hand, it's just so that He can make a path for something bigger and better. Um, so we honestly believe that. We know the power of prayer, and we thank everybody um, that had any part in this. If you even just said a prayer for Him, I, oh gosh, I thank you more than you know. So, all right, enough of this. Tomorrow will be another meet the animals, and then Saturday we will do a podcast. So. Hang in there and you guys do the pants chest a lot. <laughs>